Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3D P. And before I get started talking about ironing and Orca Slicer today, I want to take a moment to thank my sponsors, subscribers, as well as those of you that have joined my YouTube membership. It means a lot and it helps the channel. So with that being said, let's go ahead and switch over to Orca Slicer. This video is brought to you by PCB Way, an awesome prototyping service. I want to thank them for their sponsorship for this video. Now, I want to start off today's video by looking at two different prints, and these are examples on the Orca Slicer Wiki. You'll notice the one on the right is the back of a Benchy, and it sort of looks unfinished. Now, one of the reasons for this is these were all created with FDM 3D printing, so it's all plastic that's laid down layer by layer. And depending on the settings on your printer, it's sort of going to have an unfinished look. And depending again on that tuning, it look, may look more or, or less unfinished. Now, on the right, they've used a setting called ironing. And ironing allows us to basically add a more finished look to the model and at the same time, maybe reducing some post-processing. So before I get started with showing the ironing settings, I just want to talk a little bit more about the definition of ironing. Now, very similar to the way we iron our clothes, ironing is the process where the printer looks at the last layer you've printed, or the topmost layer, sets the Z value of the nozzle equivalent to that layer, and runs over the model again. At the same time, it's pushing out a tiny bit of filament. So if we look at the model on the right that has no ironing, we can see maybe there's some gaps in here around the storage bin, some gaps around the little flag holder. And because the printer, when we turn on ironing, is going over the model again and pushing out a tiny bit of filament, we're not really seeing those gaps. So in some cases, those gaps are closed off. And at the same time, it's because it's reheating what we've just printed, it's giving those ridges and other imperfections, it's letting them heat up and then basically flattening them out. So again, you get a much more finished look where you can get a much more finished look. There are several key benefits with this, as I said, a better model, but there are some trade-offs. The benefits, again, that aesthetics look better, Sometimes, particularly for mechanical parts, you have smoother surfaces and that can help with functionality. And then in some cases, they'll reduce post-processing. But the negatives can include an increased print time. You can also have some heat creep and clogging in your nozzle. Because the nozzle is actually touching the model as it runs over that surface, you can have adhesion issues because the ironing will actually knock the model off the bed. And then it's also limited to flat surfaces. So if you have an incline or some other surfaces, you don't get that look you really want. So again, it's more for a flat surface effect. You can see on this model, on the one on the right, you'll notice down here at the bottom, the stair step effect. And still, even on the model that's ironed, although the line here is smoother, there's still a stair step effect because that line isn't totally flat. It's at an incline. With that being said, let's switch over to Orca Slicer and take a look at our settings. I've loaded a calibration cube on my Creality K2 Plus, and I'm going to use this printer to print some test models. Let's start off by going to the ironing settings, and we can find those under quality. You scroll down, and then you'll see the ironing section. Right now, by default, it's set to no ironing. Now, we have several different options under ironing, so let's take a look at those values. With ironing, we have three main settings, all top surfaces, topmost surfaces, and then all solid layers. So all top surfaces, what that'll do is do ironing across all the top layers on the model. So let me see if I can show this. Let me slice this plate. And we'll notice that the top surface looks very uniform. Even inside the Z here, again, there's some uniformity to that because that is a top surface. Now let's go over here and just do the topmost surface. Run slice. And now you'll notice it's just ironing the topmost layer here. The Z is still showing the original pattern. So again, it's not necessarily, and you look down here in the X and you can see it as well, you'll see that it's not ironing 
all the top surfaces, just the topmost layer. Now, the last setting is all solid layers. Let's run that. And that's actually ironing everything that's solid. And that also includes internal layers and infill. So you could see on this inside of the model here, there's some ironing going on. Let's go down towards the bottom and see if we can see some ironing in there. So again, you can see the ironing effect at the very bottom inside of the model. And that's an area we're not going to see. So when it comes to using ironing, the most common setting people use is that all top surfaces. So let's just take a look at the settings now just under that. Now there's two patterns. There's rectilinear and rectilinear. Let's go back up to that top layer. Is more like a diagonal pattern going across the model. Let's switch this over to concentric and you'll see that does more of a concentric circle. Now at least from this look of the model, you actually can see some lines here. So that to me doesn't look as good. I'm going to print these out on the Creality K2. And so we'll see what they look like with actual prints. Now let's go over and some of the other settings to look at is the ironing speed, which is this is set by default to 30 millimeters a second. And what you need to know is the recommended speeds are typically for PLA between 20 millimeters per second and about 80 millimeters per second. Pet G, you would typically use speeds of around the same, maybe a little bit slower at the top end, 20 to 60 millimeters per second. And then ABS ASA, which might be just about the easiest to iron based on various recommendations online, you're going to use a speed of between 30 to 100 millimeters per second. Now, let's look at some of these other settings. I don't typically mess with angle, but one of the things we can do is play around with inset. I'm going to set this to a big number. So I'm just going to go one millimeter, change this back to rectilinear, slice it, and you'll see that it doesn't start ironing on the very edges. It actually comes in one millimeter. Now, I probably don't want to use one millimeter. Maybe I want to use 0.5, but basically what that's doing is it's insetting from the edges. Now, in this case, doing 0.5 gives me a very distinct border between the edge of the model or the edge of the ed indentation and the ironing area. So you can play around with that setting. Now, the other key setting when it comes to quality is the ironing flow rate. The ironing flow rate, as I mentioned, the printer is running the nozzle over the top of the model. It's also extruding a tiny bit of filament. In the case of this setting, and this set by default, it's doing 10% of my flow. So that gives you an idea of other settings you can play with. Now, for me, I'm going to do some test models. Let me zoom out here and we'll go over to my other plate. I've created 10 different models, or I'm sorry, 11 different models with various different settings, one model with no ironing whatsoever, and set some different things so we can sort of take a look at what this does. I've also changed the infill pattern in the topmost layer. One of the gotchas with ironing, if we look under strength, can be the fact if you have too little in, because you actually want a little bit more infill, since the nozzle is pressing down on that top layer, if you don't have enough infill, it's possible for the nozzle to actually poke through and create gaps and holes when it's doing the ironing. The other problem you can have is you typically need between three to six shells or walls and top layers when you're ironing. Because again, with one shell, it can poke through as the nozzles running over the model. Now I'm going to print my test models and we'll come back in a little bit. And this takes, I think, about two and a half hours. So we'll print these models and then come back and take a look what the settings look like and how they work for me. I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and the Minimal 3DP channel. PCBWay is an awesome prototyping service. They have this great instant quote feature that allows you to design a PCB board, submit all the specifications, and then get an instant quote. Additionally, starting September 1st, they have a new promotion where for the entire month, you can get a free purple solder mask on your order. This is normally an upgrade option, but for the entire month, it will be free. I also want to point out additionally, 
that in September, they're running a special on 3D printing with TPU materials and a discount. Now for anything over 20 grams, the discount gets bigger and bigger. And with those bigger prints, I'll also point out that you can get all the way up to 80% off. So that's something interesting. If you need some TPU prototypes, you might want to take a look at this great new promotion. Thanks again to PCBWay for their sponsorship. Finish printing my test models. We're going to start with taking a look at number one here. Number one, if I can get this to show up, has no ironing. And you'll notice you can see the lines here really well. So that's again number one. Go to number two. Number two is doing the all top surface rectilinear. And you can see that that actually looks really good. And I'm looking, it's hard to see in here with the letters. Those areas are ironed as well. Number three, I use the circular ironing. And I really can see the boundaries there just like I could on the preview. So I don't think that looks quite as good. Now, this is number four, and this is just the very top layer. If you look real careful, you can see the lines in the Z, so it's just on the top surface. Again, the circular, and you can see again that line on the outside. Six is all layers or all solid surfaces. Again, that looks very similar to the surface that's just the top layers. Now, I think this one maybe has the highest quality, but again, so much was ironed and it added so much extra time, I'm not sure it was worth it. Circular again. We'll notice again, you can see those lines. I think the rectilinear is better. E is just one top layer. And you can sort of see maybe the top finish, it's poking through a little bit. There's maybe some gaps. So that just has a single top shell. Number nine, I did with a 5% infill. And I really don't think that looks bad. So I'm thinking having a larger infill or less infill, probably on a bigger object, I might see some sagging. I'm not seeing it here. And then lastly, on this model, I did a 0.5 inset. And you could sort of see the lines here around the edge. And maybe the corners are a little bit sharper here than this one that's all top layers with no inset. So that gives you a good example of what everything looks like. I'm going to apologize for my table shaking a little bit. One of my printers is up against the table. And I've already recorded this once, unfortunately, and messed up the sound. So I've had to go back and re-record. If you have any questions or comments about ironing, let me know. Now, I am in the process of printing a model for ironing calibration. And I'll probably do a short video on that later this week. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a good night.